Hi, welcome back to our videos. I'd just like to film a quick video on Parallels Desktop. We're currently at version 18.1.0 and um, we've had a couple of clients ask about it so we just want to quit film the video. Now in the past we have done a video on Parallels Desktop failing to start up so I thought I'd give you an overview of the new new one. Now I've got a few systems set up here, Linux, Windows 11, this is actually Windows 11 as well but it's set up for me to use when I am looking at some systems and I need to be on the Mac. Now this is a MacBook Pro M1, 16 gigabyte RAM. It is the previous model, 2020, so it doesn't. It's not the M1 Pro or M1 Pro Max. So I'm just going to boot up now, and we'll get to it. Now I have put uh, a few soft pieces of software on here, such as Microsoft Office, um, to get to actually have certain things so we can look at. It's just going to boot up. Uh, once it has booted up, I'll show you a couple of things that we like about it and um, basically so at the moment just to let you know the setup is it's using automatic so parallels do have their recommended version for the way you set it up so typically for us a little bit of RAM and a little a few processors to it now you can change that so if you think the performance isn't good enough you want to try and improve it you can adjust the settings so if we go to it show you there if configure uh, you can see here automatic so recommended for CPU 6 gigabyte RAM and it's used shared graphics so typically you don't really set the graphics you just say whether it best fits for external display retina or scaled so it's currently external displays because I use them a lot and um, so as you can see it's booted up reasonably quick but it could be better so if you load up the file explorer so you notice it's not always instant so sometimes that's the thing with parallels uh, so this is quite an honest review some when you watch some of the reviews out there they they say it runs fantastic perfect and no issues but actually uh, there are some issues at times to speed some of that can be how much performance you give it what you're actually doing on your Mac at the time now right now I have a few apps open on the Mac so if you look down there I've got a few browsers Outlook a few, a few more things open so not too many but it handles it pretty well so if you see here you've got a choice of the local disk there that you give it, you can choose how much you give it free space when you create a virtual machine, which will we will do a video later on for um, creating a virtual machine, how it's all set up. That is a planned video sh shortly. So I'm just going to see if we actually work. So we do use um, Data Workplace for online storage for a lot of things that we do here. So and that is pretty much unlimited storage so if you want to chat about that head over to hamiltonsystems.co.uk and get in touch if you've got any questions about getting unlimited storage but so for now the Mac itself is two terabyte so but you only allocate so much to, to this it is kind of an expanding disk so it does um, have a certain amount there you can make it bigger, you can make it an expanding, expanding disk. What I typically use Windows for at the moment is the essential files that I do need Windows for and the use, heavy use of PowerShell. Uh, we've been in IT business, there are a lot of things that we need to run power, parallel for, um, for the Windows specific applications and I use PowerShell for that. We also do want to remote onto certain machines that just works better if you use a Windows environment but I do prefer running the Mac uh, heavily first. So there you go, you got your power, power, um, PowerShell. So if you want to do a normal start menu and you search for Excel, you're not going to get 100% performance experience compared to running it natively. If I were to put this into some sort of boot camp mode which unfortunately Apple don't support on the M1 Max at the moment so it would run better but we've got to cope with this for now and we're just running running it on uh, a virtual machine so I'm just going to go into now so 
if you open a blank worksheet, so as you can see, it doesn't load fluidly. Like if you run it natively, it's going to run instant. For instance, if I bring up here, so this is the Windows, and then this is the Mac. So if you'd run it Excel, see, Excel come up there. Now there was a little bit of delay actually, and that is because Parallels is taking up some of the CPU power. So you will notice it's the performance isn't a hundred percent when you've got a virtual machine running. So, but obviously the Windows. It was straight there. You could see it. Um, if we go back to parallels, so it depends on your preference, really. If you prefer one running Excel in Windows, we do have clients that do prefer that. Even though they like to run a Mac, they just want to run a Windows version of Excel uh, and Office because there are some feature differences, uh, particularly when it comes to Outlook. However, in my experience, the virtual machine when it comes to Outlook, the performance isn't great. And that's one thing that needs to be worked on. Um, I am planning to upgrade the machine to an M1 Max with at least 64 gig of RAM, but that is com coming in the future there. Uh, partly because of the expense and with the video editing I do, I like to have a lot of storage. So that is Excel for you. So we typically on here, I use Firefox. So I don't really use Edge or Chrome just because the sheer amount of RAM it uses. Firefox does use less. So especially when I'm using a virtual machine, if I need to check something, what we'll do is when we're working on some other website content, we will open up a browser in Windows. We'll have a look, see how that looks. And sometimes you, you just got, don't get that kind of performance running Firefox on uh, the Mac. So it's handy to have Windows just to see how different it may load. Sorry, there was a slight delay there, so it threw me off. So compare to actually running it on a Mac natively, going to browser contents, doing everything, it's not going to be as fast. But if you need to run an emergency application, it is handy. And like I say, what you can actually do is run it together with Windows. I've chose to run it in this view at the moment. But if you want to change the view and you want to set exit the full screen, so you can have it like this, so you can still see the Mac applications and the Windows together. But also, there is something called coherence mode. And what that means is basically, when you enable coherence mode, what it actually does is it incorporates the Mac applications and the Windows applications together. So you can access it like a start menu within the Mac from Parallels. So I'm going to show you that once it's switched. So obviously just to let you know as well, because I'm running an M1 MacBook Pro, um, the actual Windows is only ARM based. So it's not the Intel variant. So I do have another MacBook Pro but which is MacBook Pro 2015, and we have Parallels running on that. It does run pretty well, but again, uh, going to the future, we need to look at better things because technically it doesn't support Windows 11 on that one, so you have to use a workaround to get it to work. But it looks like we have encountered an error, so I'm not going to be able to show you coherence mode at the moment. I just want to also show you a quick tool uh, a way of getting in and out of parallels really quickly so if you are full screen mode if you press control and option key you do get uh, options at the top or you can actually use your mouse and hover at the top there sometimes it will show up now what you can do is you can actually press that to get either get out of your green button can you can get out full screen but actually if you want to just quit but um, come back to it quickly you do have an option of pressing suspend. So what it'll do is it'll put it in suspend mode and you'll have like similar to here, like little half moon shapes. So you can get back into it quickly. So if you're working on something, you've got to go off um, and you want to use the Mac or you've got to shut it down or you've got to go out of the building. Um, 
and you're taking it with you you can just put it in suspend mode what it will do sometimes it, it does put itself to sleep as well so if you're working on the map quite a while you've left the window side uh, without any activity it will pause itself but not quite the same as this so it can take a little bit of time to actually put it in suspend mode it really depends on what you've got open how much power you're giving it so obviously if you give it more ram it's going to be putting that into a suspend mode so it can actually just pull back up so that uh, uh, creates a little file there so i'm just going to open this up and as you can see it's already actually done it's just going back to full screen just take a little bit of time compared to what it did on the intel version of parallels but it, this is an M1 MacBook Pro, 16 gig of RAM, but it is the 2020 model. So obviously the much faster M1 Pro and M1 Max, I'm sure it'll handle it much much differently. Once I've got that, I'll do a refresher review and go through there and see what the difference is. I'm really excited to actually find out that because I'm hoping it does perform really well because it is so handy, especially when I'm demoing to clients uh, what you can do. So... One of our tools, let's see if we've actually got it active. It's not actually fully active on here, but what I'll do is I will be demoing how you can communicate with us, us if you're a client, uh, log in tickets easily. I've shown a video recently on how to get the best out of our website, but I just want to say thank you for comments as well. So there's some great comments on the videos coming up. And we are very new to YouTube. I'm just getting started, so i got to learn. And you've got to learn the content, so I've got to learn how to do the videos. But thank you for watching. Thank you for reaching the end of this video. If you'd like this video and you want to see more content from us, please hit the like and subscribe, and also the bell notification, which lets YouTube keep you up to date. And if you want to hire us for a project, please head over to hamiltonsystems.co.uk, and in the top right-hand corner, you'll find a hire us button. We'd love to hear from you soon. Thank you.